So in this video, I want to show you about instancing in Unity with Houdini Engine. So let's start here in Houdini. I already have a setup, so I have a grid, and I'm scattering around some points on this. Then I'm going to copy to points a model, which in this case is a rubber toy. So you can see that we have all these models. So the first way of instancing that I want to show you is with the copy to points and enabling here pack and instance. So with that enabled, it's automatically instancing these models and not making new geometry. So now let's wrap this up into a tool. So select everything. I'm going to go here and make a tool. And with that setup, we can already bring this then into Unity. So with Unity, we import our assets. We can drag this in our scene. And if everything goes right, we then see our models and the geometry that we had in Houdini. So we have the rubber toy here as well. And this is then instanced on the points from the scatter. So we can also open here and we can see that each of them is an instance. So we can individually click them if you want to. So this is one way of this is one way of instancing. And I also want to show you another way, which is then with uh, attributes. And with attribute instancing, we can then directly, for example, say that we want to use a certain prefab or models that I have here in my project. And we, so we can Houdini define which model we want to use. So back in Houdini, I want to then make a new tool and I'm going to grab here the grid and the scatter. So I'm going to copy paste this, go outside of my tool, and I'm going to make a new tool here on the side. So I have my grid and with points, so we can see that we have the points here. And on these points, I want to then define a path. So each point will contain a path to a model. Like this point needs to be a certain paint bucket or a wooden plank and so on. So the way we're going to do this is by using a create attribute. So in here, we can then fill in some information. So of course, we need to give it a proper name like a Unity instance. So it immediately knows what to do with it. Then we need to set a certain path. So this will be a type string. So currently it's set to float. So let's change that to string. And then in here, we can then define or say the path to the asset. So to get the path, we actually have to go back into Unity. We can right click on an asset and then we see the option to copy the path. So copy this path and in Houdini, I can now paste the path in that. So it knows where to find these assets. We can also double check this in the geometry sprite sheet here. So here on the side, we then have on each point the location of the asset. So in this case, we have the paint bucket. So now let's also make a tool from this. So I'm going to select everything. Then I'm going to quickly make a tool here with attribute instancing. So with that ready, let's go and check this then into Unity. So here I have my tool. And let's also drag the other one on the side here. And we can again just drag and drop that in the scene. And if everything goes right, we have then all these paint buckets automatically placed for us. So this is actually what I wanted. So of course we can also, for example, use prefabs. We're not limited to like geometry. So we can sense a lot of different things here with that. So we can see here also that everything is still linked. So if I would have a prefab, the prefab would be still linked here. Also here, if you take a look at our Houdini engine menu, we then have a special menu for these instances. So for example, here I can open this and I can see what current element I'm instancing. So for example, I can grab my prefab and replace that. So now I have the prefab with these uh, paint buckets and other things here. So we can here switch it inside of the tool. But I also want to show you how we can get some more randomness and variation with Houdini and attributes. So for example, I want to have this lamp and I want to also scatter the lamp uh, inside of these paint buckets as well. So I'm going to copy a pad here and I'm going to jump back to Houdini. Then in Houdini, I want to use a random attribute. 
So I want to randomly select between, for example, the paint bucket and the lamp, so we can randomly have a variation then. So of course here again we need to define the name, so Unity Instance, so Houdini Engine knows what to do with it. The next step is we need to set again path values, so we're going to have to change some properties here, so we're going to have to change this to Custom Discrete. And in Custom Discrete we need to of course change the type to a string, so we can set the path to the assets. So here we can have paths as much as we want to, so we can increase this to a large number, but in this case I'm going to say two assets. So I have my lamp that I already have copied, and then I'm also going to here grab my paint bucket that I previously had. So that's all set up. And again, I want to then save this as my tool, but I also want to make sure that this is my out output, so I'm going to place a output node. So now when I save this and bring this back into Unity, if I now would simply click Rebuild, we will now see that we also have the lamps scattered and they are randomly choosing between the paint bucket and the lamp. So again, these are still prefabs, so we can adjust them, uh, tweak them, like we can even see the handle so we can play around with these things. So it's, this is just, Houdini is just placing these assets and we can still manually tweak them afterwards. So we're not like working destructive, we can always uh, play around with things. You can also see here that we have more instancing slots here, so we can add more if you want to. For example, we can add more elements. I can, for example, grab maybe the workbench over here and use that as my other element. So here, if I would drag that in here, it is now randomly replacing the lamps with the workbench here. So only thing here is with the workbench, my pivot point is not uh, correctly set up, so that's something to also keep in mind, is that the pivot points matter, of course. So you can just keep clicking the plus icon if you want to add more, so that can be an option if you want to add some more variation in there. But I want to also jump into Houdini and also show you a couple ways here. So in Houdini we can also create a custom menu. So we're gonna go here and go to parameters, so we can actually uh, create custom sliders and values to play around with. So in this case, I'm going to go to the random attribute. And I want to grab here, for example, uh, the seat. So we can go to options and grab the seat value. So here the seat. So whenever we change that, we will have a new uh, variation. So when we click apply, it's actually now linked. You can see it on the green color. Then we can go back to our values here and we can, for example, drag our paths and also our weight. So our weight is useful for if you want to see this model be appearing more or less. So in this case, let's grab our paths and our weights and assign them here to our tool. So we can do this for all of them. So in this case, we only have two and now they're set up. So of course, we want to give this also a good naming like model one and model 2 for example. You can give this any name as you want, I just keep it uh, simple with model 1 and 2. So pressing apply will link the values together, so keep that in mind. So we can start now exposing more and more values as we go, so we can make a lot of complicated values and tools here. And let me be also grab for example some options from the scatters, like the scale, so we can play around with that as well inside of Unity. So let's now go back into Unity. So let's rebuild our tool and now we should see our custom parameters. So we don't directly need the instance menu there anymore, we then have our own menu for that. So first of all let's test out the global seed. So as soon as I change the seed we will have new variations on the scattering result. Whenever I change the value a little bit, we will have new results. Then I also have the asset pad, and as you can see, it's quite, I would say, static. Like, we cannot, we will have to type it manually or copy paste it. We cannot just simply drag an asset in there or have it automatically assigned. So, there is some ways on to fix this, but I'm going to show you that later. Then let's also test some other parameters like our weight value. 
So if I would increase the weight, we will see this model more appearing. And if I would lower the weight, we will see this model appearing less or almost none. So the weight is pretty cool to define uh, if you want the asset more or not. So that, I think it's just pretty useful. Then we also have the scaling. So we can scale the models bigger or we can scale them smaller and then we have more of them. That's automatically done by the scatterer itself. So now I want to change the asset path here. So I want to have a better way of saying what asset I want it to be. So in Houdini, we're going to go back to our menu here and we're going to select both of the asset paths or the string values. So select both of them. So make sure they are the same type. And then we're going to scroll all the way down here to the tags. And we're going to add a certain tag name. So in the tag here, we're going to type something which is called Hue Asset Path. So it's a Houdini Engine and Unity Asset Path. So this will automatically then help inside of uh, Unity. So make, make sure you are typing this correctly, otherwise it might not fully work. So make sure you double check this. You can also check out the in documentation about Houdini Engine with Unity. There is some more information about that as well. So now we can see that we can select multiple parameters and assign values immediately to a few parameters. And in Houdini and then in Unity here now, let's rebuild. And then we can see that they are now actually, uh, we can open our menu and we can immediately like drag and drop like a prefab in here. So this way is much better uh, than the previous way. So we can just quickly drag and drop assets in here. So again here the pivot will matter. So in this case the pivot is not ideally set up. So for example with this prop it's a bit better. And then you can see we can quickly uh, tweak and change uh, our model. So if you would share this with an artist, they can quickly uh, load in their own models. So with Attribute Sensing, it's pretty cool that we can have our own menu here. So let's summarize here a few things about the different methods. So here we have to copy two points. So this is great when you want to bring a geometry that is generated inside of Houdini and instance that. So it will bring in the geometry and instance them. So it will do these two things at once. But if you are having already a project with a lot of different models, like you're working with a lot of artists who make cool art, then you want to probably like instance that prefab or model so we can get a path and then attribute instancing is something that is more preferred or actually in general more often used where we just define what asset we want to copy so it automatically works with the project itself instead of importing new geometry. So we can also make custom interfaces and custom weight values or other sliders. So we can have a lot of different controls in here on how this works. So that's a bit about the difference between those two. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a few new things here and thank you for watching.